What's going on guys? Welcome back to DCS World. Welcome back aboard the FA-18C Hornet for another tutorial video. In this one we're going to take a look at the AGM-84D Harpoon over the horizon anti-ship missile. Now that's a mouthful so let's break it down. The AGM-84D is an over the horizon missile which means it fires out to ranges beyond what we would normally be able to see below the horizon. So, for example, it has an effective range of, you know, 100 plus miles. You, under normal circumstances, can't visually see out that far. That's beyond the horizon. That's over the horizon. So that's why it's called an over the horizon missile. Now, um, we've got a few things to set up here as always. Uh, let's go master arm on, air to ground, and we're going to select our harpoon from the stores page here with the label HPD. Now the HPD, the harpoon, has a 25 second warm up period, so very short there. I'm going to halt the camera while we take a look. We have two modes available to us to fire the harpoon. We have BOL or bearing only launch denoted here under the program. We also have range and bearing launch, or RBL. We're going to take a look at bearing only launch first, and then we'll do a launch uh, with uh, range and bearing. We can change that mode here with the mode switch. Now, uh, just bear in mind, to switch to RBL mode, we need to have a waypoint designated, which I will demonstrate in a little bit. FLT is the fr uh, flyout flight profile. Uh, it has three settings, high, medium, and low. Low corresponds to a cruise altitude of 5,000 feet. This is a cruise missile, so it will be cruising at a specific altitude for a while until it finds a target. Medium is about 15,000 feet, and high is whatever your launch altitude is, up to 35,000 feet. So if you launch at 20,000 feet, it will cruise at 20,000 feet until it finds a target. If you launch at 40,000 feet, it will descend to 35,000 feet and cruise there until it finds a target. For our demonstration, we're going to set this to low. It uh, tends to yield the most consistent results. So it will cruise at 5,000 feet. Term is the terminal guidance mode. We have two available to us here. We have pop-up mode, which means the missile will dive down towards the sea and then pop up and dive onto the target. And we have skim mode, which means the missile will skim the surface for the final uh, couple of miles right before it hits the target, and it will try to strike the target's hull near the waterline. A couple of options on the right side. We have HPTP. This stands for Harpoon Turnpoint. Uh, this is a waypoint that we will set to command the harpoon to fly out to this, tar uh, to this waypoint here, and it will then turn towards a specified bearing. FXP is fixed point. Uh, this is useful for setting up a sort of a mid-range point between our own aircraft and the target point. Step allows us to step through the various missiles. So for the first demonstration, we're going to use bearing only launch. I'm going to keep the flight profile at medium. Actually, correction there, I'm going to make it low and it's going to be a skim terminal profile. It's back out here. Now we need to program in a few things. So for bearing only launch, and we're going to use a harpoon turn point here, we need to go UFC. We need to set our search distance. Now what this means is this is the distance after either after launch with no harpoon turn point or after reaching the harpoon turn point, this is the distance after that point at which the missile turns on its own radar to search for targets. So for our purposes, we're going to set it to five miles. Okay, we see there, five nautical miles. DSTR is destruct. This is the self-destruct distance of the missile. So if we select this, let's say we want to set the missile, it's actually defaulted to 60. Um, let's set it to 50 since it's going, we're going via a uh, turn point for this example. And our bearing from the turn point is going to be two, seven, four degrees. So we'll set that here with the bearing. 
And that's effectively it. We could actually launch the missile now. However, the, this missile, as configured, would go off into nowhere because I mentioned we're going to be using a harpoon turn point. So I need to go look over here, and I'm just going to pause the camera there. Let's take a look at our HSI. We actually have some symbology on the HSI that tells us where the harpoon is going to fly out to. So if we look, the harpoon from our own ship is going to fly out at a heading of 274 degrees, and that X is going to be the self-destruct point at 60 miles. However, we have a waypoint here, waypoint 2, that is directly in front of us. And from mission planning, we know that the ships that we want to target are at a rough heading of 274 degrees from that waypoint. So what we can do is make sure that waypoint 2 is selected, which it is here. We're not going to designate it, but we're going to go over here and we're going to select HPTP for Harpoon Turn Point. And now if we look at the HSI again, we see that we now have a flight out to the turn point and then the harpoon is going to turn to its own heading of 274 degrees and it's going to search for targets after five miles after reaching this turn point okay so that being said that's pretty much it we can actually launch this missile now uh, just a quick look at the HUD we have HP BOL for harpoon and bearing only launch mode and we are in zone to actually fire the missile if we were too far off bearing, we could get an out-of-zone warning. But, that's all said and done. All we need to do now is press and hold weapon release. There goes the missile. And let's watch it fly a little bit and talk about what this is. Now, the AGM-84D, as I mentioned, is a cruise missile. So, you might notice there's no rocket motor on this. There's no really anything. You do see what looks like a vapor trail behind it. And as it's descending, it actually went supersonic there for a second. This missile being a cruise missile actually has a tiny jet engine on the back of it. So that little kind of cone in that hole you see there is the jet exhaust for this missile. And that jet engine allows for continuous thrust so that this missile can continue to fly under its own power. Unlike something like a harm, which has a finite amount of energy that it can expend via its rocket motor. So being a cruise missile, this will fly a very, very long distance. And uh, I'm actually not sure what the theoretical maximum limit to the distance is, but I know sticking to within 100 to 130 miles is usually your best bet for accurate results. Now, this is going to take quite some time to actually get down to altitude. It's descending through 8,000 feet, and it's going to take a long time to actually get to that harpoon turn point, which is out here ahead of it. So stand by while this thing flies its course, and uh, we'll talk in a little bit once it gets at the harpoon turn point, and we'll see it make its course correction at that point. All right, so we're looking at the missile again here. It's been flying for about... Mm, probably almost 10 minutes. <laughs> I'm not actually kidding about that. Uh, it should be nearing the turn point shortly, so we're going to see it turn here momentarily. And there's the turn. It's reached its turn point, and now it is turning to a heading of 274 degrees, and after five miles of travel, it is going to turn on its radar and search for targets. And in fact, because I have uh, nice labels on, you can actually see the ships out there in the distance. But uh, we'll watch what this missile does. And it looks like it's found a target, so now it's going to dive down to its terminal setting here, which is sea skimming. So it's going to get very, very close to the water, and it's going to attack the target from very low to try to cause as much hull damage as possible. In contrast to the pop-up mode, the pop-up mode would attempt to dive on top of the target and cause some top damage. I generally like the results from the sea skim mode a little bit better, but as you can see we are down at about 66 feet altitude and we're flying towards that ship in the distance there. As we get even closer it should skim even lower. Now the reason we sea skim is for protection against 
something like a SeaWiz. It's like an Aegis SeaWiz type system that would uh, attempt to defend against this missile by firing a high caliber machine gun or a high power Gatling gun at our missile as it's flying towards it. But uh, let's watch the explosion here. Boom. Smack right into the hull, and that is one dead cargo ship. Now, let's do another launch using bearing and uh, range and bearing mode. So, what we need to do is select, for my instance here, it's going to be waypoint 3, which is right in front of the targets. I'm going to weapons designate that target. And now I can go over to my... Let me just unpause my camera here. Let me, I can go over to my mode button here and change it to range and bearing launch. Now notice that the guidance parameters that we plugged in for bearing only launch are no longer there. It's gotten them automatically because it has a fixed waypoint in space that it can actually fly to. And that's going to be its bearing and its range. We have one extra option here, which is the seek sensor or seek setting, I'm sorry. And we can change this between large, medium, and small. So we're going to try it with small here. We're going to do a low flight profile again, and we're going to do terminal. It's going to stay at skim. Now, we actually need to come out of active pause because I want to get lined up with the actual bearing that we have here. So you can see I've actually got a effectively a CCRP target. It's 77 miles out there. And there's our target diamond. All right, I figure that's good. I'm going to go back and active pause just to make this easier. So everything looks good. We can actually fire this right now. So we're going to call Bruiser. And there goes that missile. A few parting notes. Over the horizon, anti-ship cruise missile. Probably the longest ranged weapon in DCS at the moment. Uh, somewhat limited usability just because of some damage model issues that uh, Eagle Dynamics does need to iron out with them. But other than that, it's an interesting piece of tech to play with. So uh, let's let this one fly out and wait for impact. And there goes the missile. 